Well, first of all, uh, I guess um, uh, we might want to say that uh, the reason we're shooting this video is because, as you know, uh, the track will be closing at some time. Uh, we were involved with a church group and uh, we were looking for a project and about that time the track was going to open up and so we uh, we thought that would be a good thing to do so I had a group of altar boys for the church and we got in touch with uh, the track management and they let us come on board and uh, on the very first race so we were out here uh, selling programs uh, drinks and concessions with, with our church group it, it, it was a good project for us because uh, the races were kind of spread out a little bit and uh, it gave us a chance to uh, make some uh, revenue for the, for the club. We stayed on with the, with the track through um, all, the, all the races. You know, we had uh, the Indy cars out here, we had the NASCARs, and we got to meet most of our drivers. Um, there at one time or another would eat here at this uh, basically this this spot right here the concession stand Christian, I mean, yeah, like yeah, 20 yeah. years old or what yeah uh, uh, let's see 67 we must have been uh, right in our 20s um, uh, 21 22 probably uh, our boys were like four and five years old and belonged to the church group and uh, and we did that for you know maybe eight ten years we were here when uh, Mario and Reddy uh, broke the speed record of uh, 235 miles uh, on this track, and uh, we were here to see, um, you know, Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, uh, all, all the major drivers came through here. AJ Foyt. Uh, after a period of time, and uh, for whatever reason, racing that format stopped. Mostly, the people we have enjoyed every, each and every one of them has come in. Very nice. We've met so many. We're blessed that way. The, most of the people that uh, came, we knew the children when they were little. Jack's son was one of them. Uh, he would come out and help us. And, Seven, uh, eight years old? Yep. And, and do fries Elizabeth. and stuff. Yep. So, uh, again, uh, a lot of memories, uh, a lot of friendships, and uh, just uh, uh, basically a, a good time, you might say. And, Show, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Found parts in the backyard. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. in Nacogdoches, we found some parts of the shuttle in the backyard. Sad times, in the, you know, in history that uh, we were out here. There was a race going on, and like everyone else, they got to see it. Uh, you know, you saw shiny uh, shooting star type uh, high bright lights. Uh, yeah, because we, we were here that Saturday morning, if I'm not mistaken. We saw it come down, and then when we went home Sunday, we found out that it it shattered across Nacogdoches. Uh, Richard Canole, Mr. Canole, was uh, the founder, you might say, and um, that started the track. Uh, he was involved with, uh, I believe, the other sister track in Michigan, and so uh, he loved love racing. Uh, Love cars. They basically, <laughs> love to see people have fun, uh, and uh, that was part of his uh, uh, drive. That he, he just enjoyed uh, when people were, were having fun with anything to do with cars, and so uh, uh, yeah, he uh, passed away. Uh, passed away, to, and uh, we uh, we owe him a lot because, like I say, this track wouldn't be here would have been gone a long time sooner uh, if, if, if he hadn't been for him, so. And as busy as he was, he always had time to come in, have his breakfast, go do his business, come back, have lunch, and always had a joke. <laughs> always had a joke. So. I remember him sitting here eating hamburgers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here all the time. All yes, the time. all the time. And you know, that's who he was and we loved him. I loved it very much. Dan Sherrod. I've been coming here since the track was built. Uh, drove in the first race we had here in, in early fall of 69, before the Can-Am race that they had, which was uh, the first real race they had here with spectators and all. They had to have an FIA race to check the track out before they had the, the pros come. 
So we had, it was the equivalent of a regional race, but you could race here if you had an FIA license too. So some of the pros showed up just to learn the track, you know, on a low pressure environment. And uh, it was pretty much a typical regional race, except it was obviously very exciting on a new high speed track that nobody had ever seen before. It was a SCCA sanctioned race on the FIA schedule. And we raced the three mile course using the NASCAR three and four and then coming off one where they still do today. And everybody had to learn gearing and, and, and buy taller gears because this was the, by far the fastest course that anybody had ever raced on because of the length of the straight. And um, so it, it was a lot of learning going on. And as tires improved, um, especially going into one, uh, in my Formula Ford, you, you had to lift because they were harder. And then they finally developed the cantilevered sidewalls and the slicks for the Formula Fords. And that's when you could start taking one flat out um, and not having to downshift until you're halfway through the turn. And it was an exciting time to, to be able to race here. And then, and then the Can-Am race came. That was when uh, the Bruce and Denny McLaren show was in full force. And they were just blindingly fast. They were coming off of the banking into one at about 220 miles an hour. And the, the sound was just deafening. It was wonderful. The Can-Am race was the, the first big race they ever had here. Then later on, they had NASCAR and, uh, and USAC raced on the Oval as well. But the first real race was the Can-Am race on the road course. Were the grandstands like they are now? back then? Yeah, well the grandstands were there. Uh, obviously they had seats and things like that. Yeah. The, uh, the building wasn't glassed in until later. That happened later in the, in the 80s. Yeah. Um, the tower has always been there. That's the same as it's always been. Um, and early, in the early days, you could, when there was a road race, you could actually get out onto the backside and watch the racing back there. Uh, they had steps at the wall, so you could go across the track and then get up into that infield area. Um, and, and watching at the corkscrew was really, really fun. They closed it off for a while and, and didn't race back there, and, and that's when a Japanese corporation owned it, and they built the infield course, and they used that for a number of years. And then finally, the, we just said, you know, there was enough pressure that they opened up the backside and found out that it had not deteriorated at all. The banking there on NASCAR 3 and 4 started to deteriorate and we haven't been able to use that for a number of years. And that's why we use the infield portion rather than going out on the banking. When you could use that banking, the drafting duels that went on were really impressive. The V's in particular, there would be packs of eight or ten of them. Uh, coming around off the banking there. And you had the ticket the first Yeah, the, one of the things they gave us at the, the FIA race was a ticket, two tickets to the Can-Am race. And uh, when we came back for the Can-Am race, my sister worked for the Star-Telegram, so we had press passes. So I never used that ticket. And I still have it, still intact. And I still have it. <laughs> uh, Robert David Jones more commonly known as R. David Jones. In the Sports Car Club of America, and it started out as an amateur racing when people, uh, right after the war, and uh, uh, worked its way up doing uh, virtually all of the road racing in the United States at that time. And then they started bringing professional racing in about the mid-60s. Uh, this is Lone Star region. The track was originally built by a uh, promoter uh, named Larry Lopayton, who was a, uh, an attorney in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And he built the one in uh, Brooklyn or Brookfield, uh, uh, Michigan, that they still run at. And then he built this one. And this car, uh, it was a public company. And the public company went bankrupt because they couldn't quite pay all of the bills and the place was just not profitable enough and was subject to people not having accommodations and rain and schedule and the people trans they were supposed to come from the four main cities austin san antonio dallas fort worth and houston uh didn't come and uh that caused a problem so little peyton lost it through a bankruptcy and then uh, uh dick cano who ran the place for a long long time 
uh, and his group bought it, and uh, they also owned Pocono at that time. And uh, Dick was sent to manage this one, and he did for a long time. And they sold it to a Japanese group uh, somewhere probably in the 90s, maybe a little earlier than that even. But, uh, and uh, they started a giant reconstruction program, which includes some half-finished projects that never got, and they went bankrupt also. And uh, uh, Canole and his group took it back and have run it since then. Uh, but uh, it's just been a, a, a very stable, good place for everybody to race, pretty safe. The, the Japanese company was, uh, making a, a run at doing this and we're going to buy uh, this one. They did buy this one, uh, but it was financed. And uh, a physician who built a race car, a street car that could be raced, uh, got involved in the program and started redoing this location. And uh, in doing that, you can see bits and pieces of, of things they, uh, that happened. It's uh, the, the grand strands over the pit lane were going to be accommodations, and that project was never finished. And they rebuilt the tower up here, and when they did, uh, uh, it was almost finished, or was finished. At any rate, they went under, and the constructor that helped build the place uh, had a mechanics and materialman's land on the place, and anything you could take out that did not damage the structure, you could repossess, and in that case, repossessed all of the glass windows in the tower except for the top floor. And uh, he also had announced, and we're in the process of trying to buy uh, and put up a racetrack in Fort Worth, which was exactly where Texas Motor Speedway is right now, same location. And uh, in the meantime, they went bankrupt, so that was never completed.